What's up guys? Alex here, AJNashville.com. On my way to a closing um, of a client that my buddy Jim Prince, thank you Jim, sent to me. I appreciate that and I appreciate you trusting me with this person. Um, he's been an excellent client, but that's not the reason for my Facebook Live video today. So one of the things I want to talk about is the difference of sales in today's market as opposed to what it was when well, Jeff and I, Jeff's in the seat. I know you can only see his ear. But um, when we got involved in the industry, you know, the big thing is when I was, when I started in mortgages, I was sat down and said, here's a list of people, call them and tell us when you have someone that's interested in a mortgage. You didn't really learn all the extra things that you had to learn. What's going on, Sean? <laughs> um, you didn't really learn all the extra things that you had to learn because it wasn't pertinent. You don't need to know about underwriting a file until you have somebody on the phone that's interested in um, purchasing a home. You know, that's the biggest thing is if you don't have a client, then what's the point in knowing what it is that you have to do without getting somebody? You know, with today's technology, there's the idea that, oh, anything that I need to know can be found on the internet. That's true to a degree, but the sales portion of things is something that you still have to learn and work through and figure out how to overcome objections. And you know, a lot of it's just hands-on experience. Those of you that have sold mortgages, that have sold real estate, things like that, you realize that every deal is different. Everybody has a different outlook on how things should be. Um, everybody has a different outlook on how they're helping somebody. You know, if you have somebody that's looking to consolidate some debt or something like that, the approach to that client's gonna be a little different than if you have somebody that's looking to uh, maybe buy a potential investment property. Also dealing with your clients that are first time home buyers is gonna be different than dealing with your clients that are um, on their third and fourth home. The fact of the matter is, there's no training that can take a person from step one and say, okay, this is what you need to do and um, move them to the next step without going through a thousand different scenarios. And my philosophy and my take on things is this, get on the phone, get yourself a person. Once you have that person on the phone, let's talk about their situation and kind of figure out what's gonna be the most effective way of doing things. Uh, Jeff was talking about it when he started as an account executive. What, you were just told to go out and find you a broker, sell uh, some rate sheets? Yeah, I mean, you, you're, you're hired on and they give you Thanks, Sean. A list of, of brokers in the area, and you it was your job to find their address, get the directions to the place, because mind you, this is, I'm old, there was no GPS. <laughs> so you had to actually figure out where these places were, and then go into a place where you don't know anybody, and solicit for business for them to use you as a company to do their mortgages through. And in order to do that, you had to grow a pair. Right. Well, and that's the thing. So I was in the same environment. Those of you that don't know, I used to be an account executive. I was given the sheet of all the brokers that were located in my region. And so I was able to go out and kind of connect with those people. But the fact of the matter is you have to do what's uncomfortable. And that's walking into a strange office, not knowing what's on the other side of the door, not knowing if there's another AE in there, um, not knowing what their perception is, what type of deals they do business with, anything of that. You just walk in, walk in as yourself and introduce yourself and go to work. You know, I've been in plenty of offices where there's other AEs in the office. Jim Pitts used to work with Argent um, and I used to see him in offices all the time, but it wasn't me against him, it was us working together. And that's the same thing if somebody has a, a mortgage company they're working with, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not something to be a, afraid of or afraid of the objection or afraid of, you know, someone saying, well, I'm working with somebody or whatever it may be. The fact of the matter is sales still remains the same. There's not a tech, technological piece that you can find that's gonna help you improve on your sales any more than there is just getting out of your comfort zone and working and doing the activities that's necessary. Those activities include picking up the phone or using social media or whatever avenue you use to reach your people. That portion has changed. It used to be just the phone. You'd pick up the phone, you'd call somebody, um, and if they answer, then you had a, a live client on the phone. Now you may reach someone through social media, and that's acceptable. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to do an activity in order to create the um, contact, the, the action or the reaction. You know, if, if you're not reaching out to anybody, you're not gonna get the person that reaches out and says, yes, actually I am interested in buying a home. In addition to that, you have to figure out what the client's needs are. 
It's not a sales thing. If you're really educating your clients and telling them what it is that they need to do in order to improve their situation, you're not selling them. You're simply educating them with something you already know. Um, and for those of you that don't know, if it's a situation you're not used to or a situation that's, that's uh, different from one that you used to be in, then seek the advice of somebody that's a little more experienced than what you are. You know, if there's a, an unusual situation, let's say a person wants to do a reverse mortgage. In my situation, I don't know how to do those. I have someone in my company that does and they'll handle that. And so I would say, hey, you know what? That's a great thing. That's not what I specialize in, but what I wanna do is get the right answers for you. So let me go ahead and send you that information as soon as I get in contact with the person that does know what's going on. Um, you so know, those are all- saying is be resourceful if you don't know the answer. No, did we lose it? No, we're still here. Good, sorry, phone call came in. But anyways, yeah, so the number one thing, the, the key, the secret to sales, and I'll tell you this is a successful mortgage person is a successful salesperson overall. The key is creating some type of action and not cutting people off. Why do I always get cut off when I'm doing these things? Well, because it's 55. I'm not going <laughs> higher than 55. The key is to, to do something to get that business. If you do nothing, and if you continuously do nothing, you will never have the business. If you're okay with being average and making $20 a day or $50 a day, you'll never do the results of the people making two and $300 a day. Or and that's not- Or even $300 a day and not getting an app. Right, but the app thing isn't important. It, it, what's important is the consistency. So, you know, if you're in the business of sales, the, the biggest thing is reach out reach out to as many clients as possible in order to make the most touches. One of my old mentors used to say this, um, if you have three pitches, how many attempts do you have at hitting a home run? The answer to that is three. Obviously, if you hit every single one out of the park, then you will hit three home runs. But if you have 300 pitches, your odds of hitting more home runs goes up substantially. And that's something that I stole from my old mentor and manager, Mr. Michael Lush, who once again is another successful person at sales because of his approach and because of his consistency. So anyways, I'm done rambling on guys. Um, Tony, I'd love to read your comment right now, but I'm going through downtown Nashville. And so I'll have to read it later on. But uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully this helps somebody, uh, creates a little bit more success. Somebody that maybe is on the fence of, hey, why am I not getting results? Maybe this is the key factor hearing from another salesperson who could turn it on and off like a faucet, who has seen success and failure all together. Um, you know, maybe this will help you get going and get motivated to reach your goals. If not, somebody else reach your goals for you and then you'll look up at them and, and wish you had done the work. So we'll talk to you guys soon.